Bite the Bullet is in conversation with Dr. Satish Kumar, pastor of the largest church in India. And he has got almost a lack of members and it's still growing. You have been in an enviable position, being the youngest pastor of the largest church. But we, you were also a reluctant pastor. Yes. You never wanted to be a pastor. Yes. How did it all start? I mean, the Christ came into my life when I was 12 years. So I was born in a strong non-Christian family. And it was my desire to reach my people. But to reach my people, I need to understand their mindset. I need to see that I'll be able to preach the gospel in a way that they'll accept it. So that has been my driving force. So all the time I wanted to see that uh, Christ is preached to those who don't understand Him. Uh, that was my driving force to reach my people back in my state. Uh, thereby I started preaching when I was 17 or 18 years. Right. Preaching on the streets about true living God. And uh, reaching the lost Preaching the gospel has been my great mission. So being an evangelist, I travel all the time. And I wanted to go to places where Christ has never been preached. So if I'm going to be a pastor, then I lose this you know, driving force. I can't go out. I can't travel. I can't reach the lost. So that's the main reason. Uh, I never wanted to be a pastor. When did this transition happen? Though I never wanted to be a pastor, but uh, God took me to Hyderabad in 1991. Uh, even though I was working for uh, a government company, I got a job in government company. Every evening I would go to villages with my young boys, those who came to the Lord through my ministry. And we try to do evangelism in the villages and planting churches. At uh, that young age itself? Yes. Uh, started almost 1991. Every evening we would go to villages preaching about Jesus Christ in a simple language with stories and parables. Uh, that is what I wanted to do. Go to villages, take Jesus to the places where he was never preached. Uh, in my diary, I wrote as a student, Lord, send me to the darkest spot in our nation so that I'll go and preach your good news. So it was my great desire to become a missionary, so rather a pastor. So missionary to pastor, that yes. transition, who was influenced in that? Uh, who influenced you? No, nobody influenced me. Uh, it's only God in His divine purpose and will he planted that seed that 95 I was preparing myself to preach to about 15 people I was on my knees under a tree preparing a sermon that was the time God spoke to me I'm going to bless you with the biggest church did you believe that uh, that was the time when I heard him speak it was a strange to me because I never wanted to be a pastor, wanted to be a missionary, wanted to be an evangelist. But when God said, I'm going to bless you uh, with the biggest church, it was a surprise to me. So immediately I shared this with my friends, those who came to the Lord through my ministry. I told them, look, God spoke to me and he said he's going to bless us with the biggest church. Did people make fun of you? No, because they know that I fear God. They know that when I say something that is from the Lord. Because they are daily walk with me. They right. have seen my lifestyle. So they believed it. Right. From 95 till 2005, we prayed sincerely, asking God to show when will this happen. Right. So for 10 years, nothing happened. 10 years, there was no, not even a sign of any mega church. But I still believed that God spoke to me, it will happen. Right. So in 
2005 god again spoke to me 2005 after 10 years right of long waiting this is a time for you to start the church okay so because god spoke to me i am bound to listen to god so that was the time i started this calvary temple with 25 people this happened in 2005 right yes did did you ask god why me god there are many other people why why do you have to choose me like if you ask me that question that question comes to me every time even now even now why did you choose me? why did you choose me other people more than why did you choose me the question that comes always in my mind is why did you trust me so much and that's a that's a heart breaking question why did you trust me so much because giving almost 1 lakh souls into my hands that's right and god is so good for some reason he trusted me and entrusted this great work to me i was But, amazed at uh, uh, you know in most of your incidents prayer came the first and the foremost thing yes. just tell us something about your prayer life from the childhood uh, god uh, gave me the spirit of prayer even when i came to know the saving grace when i was 12 years after i finished my school i would take bible i would go to fields and i would kneel down in the fields and look unto god and keep praying as a 12 years boy all alone <laughs> all alone in the fields without friends without friends and people look at me and laugh at me what is this mad guy at 12 13 years age he just pray all the time in the fields so from the childhood uh, i i depend upon god a lot uh that has been a strength in my ministry uh even before we started this ministry from 1991 till 1994 for 4 years we always pray every evening from evening 7 to till 11 if we go to villages we go and preach if not we pray like that we did for 4 years every evening constantly we pray together 10 15 young boys we keep hearing god spoke god spoke did god speak to you in an audible voice like many other people said god spoke to me in my in an audible voice in in your case what what exactly happened did you hear god's audible voice yes as again it's not audible voice but as i said earlier when god speaks men of god recognizes his voice so prayer has been a strong um foundation for our ministry the way the church has grown is amazing 2005 you started with just 25 people then 2006 1000 people and next year 3000 and 2010 it was 30000 and 2015 it was history any pastor who sees this growth will ask how did this happen can you please explain uh, i think the fundamental truth that we all have to understand is the church is a place where you have to feed the sheep you need to feed the sheep jesus asked peter peter do you love me hmm. he said yes lord you know that i love you right and do you know what he said feed my sheep if any pastor feeds the sheep with the true word of god i think church will multiply generally signs wonders miracles that brings the crowd <laughs> but in your case it, you you say it and people say it. it's a pure word yes that brings people to the church yes signs and wonders yes attracts crowd for an evangelist when he goes to a village talks about jesus christ they don't understand who he is right so god has given the grace for an evangelist to preach the gospel with signs and wonders right because heathen people they only believe when they see it right seeing is believing 
for unbelievers right but you can't bring the same formula into the church right in the church god said you believe first then you'll see so unfortunately we are trying to bring the formula of heathen into the church so it is better to believe than to see he said to martha if you believe then you will see the glory of god signs and wonders are good for heathen people to know that jesus christ is a true living god and also wonder working god but when they come to the church syrup is good for sick people but water is must for all people right healing signs and wonders good but word of god is far greater than signs and wonders heaven and earth may pass away but not the word of god and fortunately there are many churches they don't give enough time enough respect enough importance to the word of god right and because of that they are seeing the consequences for not giving the importance of the word of god right word of god has enough power to attract anyone more than signs and wonders let me tell you there was a family came to our church the son was demon possessed somebody told go to calvary temple they'll pray and he'll be set all right he'll be set he'll be set free right so they came to our temple every sunday they were the first people to come and sit in the front line because they were in need right and this boy when he goes out of the church again he is possessed with the devil he horrifies the father and mother so father and mother and this boy they prefer to stay in the church throughout the day so in the church nothing happens in the He's church nothing happens perfectly fine perfectly fine then by seeing them then i thought they are able to listen to the word of god i now believe that they have accepted jesus christ after some time i prayed for them right and uh, by god's grace the demon left them right left that boy and the boy was set free they were so happy then what happened that was the last time i ever saw them oh <laughs> i never saw them again so they wanted only the gift but not the giver so then i understand it is always better for us preachers and pastors to introduce the giver than the gift correct so i try to do justice by preaching the word of god and enabling them to understand that jesus is a savior once he comes into the heart when your heart is changed when your heart is healed automatically outside is going to be healed right this is a formula i believe it right that's what he says you clean your vessel inside first then outside but we are reversing it right we are trying to clean outside first then trying to repair inside this is a reversal order right outside yes signs and wonders needed for the heathen because they only believe by, by seeing it but inside the church believing comes by hearing the word of god right but if you don't preach the word of god where will you see the growth so in calvary temple highest priority is given for the word of god right that to pure word of god right which is not defiled right that's a major secret for 120 days you and your church people prayed before the construction and i understand prayer seems to be the most important thing in you and in your church can you just explain that a little bit of what happened there right 2005 calvary temple was founded with 25 people but we gathered in a small hall and then we moved to marriage halls function halls as the church was growing so we were forced to go from one hall to other right in 2011 again god spoke to me by next year i'm going to give you the land for the church right so i told our church members uh in 2011 our anniversary that's right saying that by next year we will be in our own place right as god spoke to me and god gave us the land in the center of the hyderabad 
All right. So, but next year we got into our own land. Right. And we celebrated our uh, anniversary in our own land. Right. As soon as we got into the land, June 11th, I declared 40 days fasting prayer. Right. Because God gave us the land. Right. And what next? Building. We need to know the will of God. All right. So I declared 40 days fasting prayer. Right. But June is the time where our where rain starts in Andhra Pradesh, in Telangana, basically in Hyderabad. Right. So June, July, August, and September, these four months, rainy season basically. So when I declared June 11th, uh, we are going to have 40 days fasting prayer, and we don't have a church, no building, no roof. So we had a stage in a open land, started fasting. So it was raining almost every evening because of the word, because the power in the word. Thousands of people have come to these 40 days fasting prayers. Thousands of people. And you Though extended it, it again another 40 days. Yes, because I started meditating book of Nehemiah. In the church, I teach my people because teaching is what is needed in the churches. So I teach. So. By the grace of God, as God lived, led to speak to our people about the book of Nehemiah, so I started meditating book of Nehemiah. And the second chapter, we see that he prayed for four months. So there is something that God is telling me to do it. Right. So after 40 days, I asked people, do you want me to extend another 40 days? They said, yes, because book of Nehemiah, as we are meditating, so powerful, so interesting, they don't want to miss it. Right. We extend another 40 days in the rain itself. After 80 days, I asked them, do you want 40 days more? As Nehemiah prayed for three to four months, it's 120 days. Right. We all decided, why not we pray for 120 days? Right. We prayed 120 days. Right. The last day I said, I do not know what to do next. You all pray what God will tell me. You all, you all pray that God will tell me the will of God. Then I knelt down and I asked God, Nehemiah prayed almost for four months before you asked him to build the walls of Jerusalem or repair the walls of Jerusalem. Right. What is that you want us to do? Then as I prayed in the morning 6.30, God spoke to me through the word. Right. Lay the foundation stone so I will build a church. Right. We have not even paid money for the, land. for the land and our ministry has no foreign contacts. Right. We don't have any foreign connections and foreign uh, contribution of funds. Right. Whatever land we bought is with the sacrificial offerings of our church members. Right. And now I'm pulling all the money together to pay for the land. One of those days of prayer, you made some amazing faith declaration, saying this church will be built in 52 days time. What exactly made you to say that? As we meditate the word of God, we see that Nehemiah was enabled to build the walls of Jerusalem in 52 days. Right. He built or repaired the walls of Jerusalem in 52 days. Right. So as we were meditating, the word became life to us. It became reality to us. If you have done it in the life of Nehemiah, why not us? You are the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. Why not you do the same thing? Why not you do, you do it the same thing again? So you declared days. saying that the next 52 days so I prayed first. Right. I asked God, why not in 52 days, why not we build a church? A massive stadium like structure. Yes. So, and God gave me the belief, God gave me uh, courage to tell to our church members, November 11th is going to be my birthday, January 1st is going to be 52nd day, somehow it's matching. So if we lay the foundation stone on November 11th, January 1st, we can actually enter into the new sanctuary. Right. Is it possible? Basically, I'm not a builder. But I prayed and God gave me boldness 
strength and faith to declare it. So I came, I said, God spoke to me to lay the foundation stone and we are going to lay the foundation stone on November 11th, the next in 52 days, January 1st, we are going to enter into our own temple. People couldn't believe it. They laughed at you? They didn't laugh at me because they know that I hear from God. Right. Because they have seen it many times. Whatever God spoke to me, that's my family. My church so is my family. You have a strong faith family. Yes, they believe it. If brother says something, it is from God, it happens. Because it happened when we were 18,000 people, I told them by next year we'll have 30,000 people. Right. By the December, we had 30,000 people. Then I said, so they have start. seen it over yes. and over and over. over again. Next year, by the time, by this time, we'll have fifty thousand people. We had fifty thousand people. When we had fifty thousand people, the thirty-first December, I told by next year, by this time, we'll have eighty thousand people in, in our church. We had eighty thousand people. Wow! So constantly they were listening to me. So God kept honoring your faith. Yes, He's, he's a wonderful God. He honors our faith. So that is what people have seen all these years. You made history in 52 days, just like the way you said, you finished the construction and you entered into the church on the 52nd day. Tell me something about that. When I said 52 days we are going to build the temple and God will enable it, there are close friends, those who known known me for a long time, they were a bit disappointed right? because of my testimony all right they don't because you know Sat brother Satish Kumar is not a builder he doesn't know the difficulties of building a church correct. like this correct but he declared it yeah but it is not possible in 52 days you can't even build a three-bedroom flat exactly or a house exactly how is he going to build a, a, a sanctuary of almost 18,000 he can't do it right all these years people looked at him as a man of God right but if he fails here uh, his testimony, testimony is going to be at stake. Right. So they called me, uh, they advised me, please, for God's sake, change your change your mind. Okay. Because we love you. Right. We don't want you to put your head down. Right. But when they try to tell me all those things, I just laughed within myself. Right. They don't understand what God spoke to me. Let us do it. Right. So we laid the foundation stone on November 11th. We started the work after two or three days. Right. I see you working also. In <laughs> yes. The, yes. That is how it started. Yeah. And the church people also were working. Thousands of people. Right. During our construction, again, we fasted and prayed for all these days. 24 hours, people were coming. In three shifts, we were praying. Eight hours, eight hours, eight hours. Okay. Hundreds and thousands of people would come, pray for eight hours. Next batch would come, pray for eight hours. Next batch, even midnight, 11 to morning, 6. So all these 52 days, they were around the clock. Around the clock, hundreds and thousands Prayer, were praying on. and praying. One side of praying is going on, the other side building was going on. That is what Nehemiah did it. That's right, yeah. And interestingly, you planned for an 18,000 people, you know, yes. structure. Why didn't you think? Because you knew that God is going to multiply manifold. You never thought of building a 50,000 seater. Basically, as I said earlier, by that time, whatever money that was having, right, gave for the land, and I am had to pay a lot of money. Right. So to declare that we are going to build a church itself is a big challenge to me, and that too we have to build it in within within 52 days. Right. You may be our church member, you may want to sell your house or a car, and then try to give something to the church. But now you have no option. Within 52 days only you have to give. But if church is built in within 52 days, after that you will not give. Right. So whoever wants to give, they have to give whatever they wanted to give within 52 days. Right. So even an opportunity for the people to give also was minimized. Minimized. Because of this period. Right. So inflow of the funds itself is not challenging. You know, uh, uh, inflow of the funds itself is a challenge to us. That's right. So how can I dream about building 50,000? Okay. Now if I have built 50,000, you would question me now, why only 50,000? Now your church is... <laughs> yes. You're so right. there is a limit for that. That's right. At that time, 
the land which actually we built the church is fully paid. Right. So we have every right to build whatever we want because it is fully paid. The other lands we were still paying for it. All right. So we cannot build anything unless you totally pay on it. Okay. So these are the restrictions we had and also as I said earlier whatever money is given by the people our church members only I can do it That's right. because this is the ministry based on faith and dependent upon God. Right. So that is how we were uh, limited to build even in those days 18,000 itself is a big. Yes. <laughs> it's very big. Yes. Yes. So 1st January 2013 right? Yes. You had a glorious day. Yes, we and, entered in. And and God showed His faithfulness yes. in your life and in the churches of yes. belief. But very interestingly, uh, this 52 days uh, is an amazing, amazing testimony yes. of God's faithfulness and your faithfulness to God. Exactly three weeks from the day of celebration, you get a court order saying that the building has to be raised to the ground. What was your first reaction? <laughs> My first reaction was a funny reaction. Really? It was a funny reaction. That was the breaking news in every news channel. Breaking news, breaking news, breaking right. news. Flash news saying it's that. All over. All, all the, the channels, media. Papers and yeah. I received phone calls after phone calls demolish the church yeah and that to be raised to the ground ground and submit the pictures within 15 days right 15 days the first thing I did was I asked our staff go and get BP mission blood pressure checking mission okay this was the first thing I did uh, by then our brothers those that around understood I think is blood pressure shooting up right so he wanted to check now maybe next step is going to be admitted in the hospital right so they went to medical store they bought a BP mission they came to me and I gave my hand check my BP they checked it right and they were so afraid to check my BP because outside everybody knows what's happening right I constantly receive phone calls People are crying. Right. Here I am in my same premises. Check my BP. Uh, they were so afraid to check my BP, but they checked it. They said it's 110 by 70. Perfectly fine. And I said, this is where I am. Why I asked you to check my BP is to let you know I am at peace. Wow. The temple is not built by man. If it is not built by man, no man can destroy it. If it is built by God, only God can destroy it. Right. So I am at peace. Nobody can touch our temple. It will not be destroyed, demolished. It will stand. So our you will God, never shake it. Our God is a God who honored our faith to build this temple in 52 days. He will not fool us. Right. He will not bring us shame to his own name. I only said, let us pray for three days. I applied for permission for construction right. for various reasons they didn't give me time meanwhile I had some issues that with the neighbors they wanted to you know create some problems mm -hmm. so finally the government I mean, uh, the, the judicial system declared gave the judgment saying that demolish it there is a BRS scheme building regulation scheme you right. can regularize your building by paying penalty right we can do that right so when we applied for that our uh, application was rejected right the reason is this regulation can be done buildings which were constructed until 2007 right not later okay so based on this the high court has given orders saying that they are not eligible even for regularizing it Okay. thereby demolish it I said only one thing when when Esther prayed for three days God has performed great miracle by destroying uh, 
the mindset of Haman and saved his people. Right. God has saved his people. Let us fast and pray for three days. And let us see what happens. Orders will be changed. I said orders will be changed. Judgment will be changed. Let us fast and pray. I declared in the temple, declared in the media also. All that we do is we fast and pray. And I believe that God is going to perform great miracle. Third day, we approached Chief Justice. Right. We again submitted our uh, uh, case to Chief Justice right. to review this. The same day, we got a jiva from government saying that buildings can be regularized till date. Right. Because it was earlier 2007. Right. But now, till date, you can regularize your buildings. Because of that order only we received demolition. Right. Because you can regularize you can do the regularization until two thousand seven. But now it is built on two thousand twelve. Right. So there is no way that these people can be regularized. All but right. now on the third day of our fasting and prayer, a new Jiva has come saying that buildings can be regularized till date. Wow. We took that Jiva, submitted to High Court, by looking at it, it dismissed the orders. Wow. So God has changed the orders and again that has proved how faithful God is so all these things made people to understand this is the glorious temple which is filled with God's glory and God built it and he sustained it so that's where uh, our the faith basically as a pastor mine was really boosted faith of our church members increased wow. and non-christians most non-christians came to know that here is the church that stood the orders of High Court. Stood the fire. Yes. Being the pastor of the largest church in India, you know, people talk about your humility. What keeps you humble? First of all, when you uh, check my website, the first lines that you read is this. God wanted weakest, useless, unworthy person on the earth. Unworthy, useless, most weak person on the earth. And I believe he found me. When God chose me, I know how useless I am or how useless I was how stupid I was. So when God blesses me, where is a chance for me to think great about me? Because he brought me out of dung. And whatever I am today is because of his goodness and grace and mercy. There is nothing to boast about myself. So I always remember from where I have come, if I am sitting here, it's not because of me, it's only because of his mere grace. People and pastors with just thousand people as their congregation, they find it difficult, so very difficult to balance between family and the church. How being the busiest person, having almost everyday programs, keep a balance between family and church? God blessed me to be a to be a blessing to other people. When Jesus himself, the Son of God, was approachable, reachable, how I become unreachable? How I keep myself away from people? I am meant for people. I am for people. I am here to pray for people, counsel people. So how can I get away from people? So if I am getting away from people, I think there is something wrong with me. That is how I felt about myself. And I made a decision from Monday till Friday, if I am in my office, if I am in my church, if I am traveling outside, from Monday till Friday, every evening 3 till 5 to 6, I am available to people. Anyone can, can come and meet me without any appointment. They can straight away come and sit in the visiting hall. One by one I will pray. If they need counseling, I will counsel. And because that is what I am called to do. <laughs> I 
I have four people. Yeah, but I'm amazed at your time management. You know, you don't have time. You know, how do you divide between the family and church now? Because uh, uh, you have almost a lack of family members <laughs> and your own family. Frankly speaking, Calvary Temple is not one man show. Right. I did not build Calvary Temple upon myself. Right. But I built upon the word of God and upon the principles. I always depend upon people. There are many people work with me, right. and I share the res I share the responsibilities, and I respect their responsibilities. Right. So, as Jesus Christ has twelve disciples to take the ministry to the people, so I do have twelve representatives. Those who represent different departments. Right. So they are the people do all the job. Under them. There are many people work day and night. So I have given these responsibilities to different different people right. and I tell them clearly, I am not boss here. So this nature has been exhibited from the day one till this day and nobody does the bossism in our temple, okay. including myself. I myself is a servant and all those who are with me are the servants. We are here to serve the people. This servant nature is there within my heart, within my circle, everybody serves. Right. So we all are servants only. You know, we conduct big, big meetings. You might have seen the pictures and videos. Right. Thousands and lakhs of people do come. Yes. I but the funny it. thing is, after the meeting, the fourth day night, do you know what I will do? I don't know. After everybody goes off, at 11 to 12 o'clock, I will leave my hotel, go to the ground, I work with the people. Wow. I try to pack things with them. I try to put things together so that we can pack and we go. If I don't set that example, if he being as a preacher of this big crusade and yet he comes and works with us, yet he comes, is being with us, why he needs to be here? He can go to hotel and relax. That's right. But they have seen that sort of servant nature in me and that's how they are motivated to do more job, more work. Wow. So that is how our ministry is all about. Amazing. Yes. Uh, you remain as an independent church. Yes. Uh, is there any specific reason you don't want to join any denomination and stay because of teaching or some other? Nothing like that. As Paul says, to win more people, I have become a person for all people. If I become, if I am attached to one denomination, thereby I am restricting my ministry. That's right. Okay. I am restricting my ministry. If I belong to Baptist, so they stamp me as a Baptist. If I am Baptist, for some reason Pentecost people are not accepting. If you are a Pentecost, so for some reason some other denomination is not accepting. Right. So my heart is to reach all people, teach to all denominations reach all the people. So it is always better to remain silent in this area and do what the job God gave to me and be an independent. I go to Baptist churches, I go to CSA churches, I go to Lutheran churches, I go to Pentecostal uh, churches. So because of this independence, I am able to reach all the denominations and preach to all the denominations. If I am branded as one, Right. This opportunity, I would have lost it. So that's why you re remain yes. independent church. When the church grows, there is always criticism. And how do you react to criticism? When I accepted Jesus Christ, Satish Kumar, he died with him. He no longer lives. So what I am today is not me. It is nothing to boast about myself, but I can say with all my heart. Somebody criticizes me, they are only criticizing somebody who, who, who died long back. Right. <laughs> what is the meaning in criticizing right. a fellow who died? So I don't even care for their criticism. There are two types of criticism. One is constructive criticism. One is out of jealousy. Right. If somebody criticizes me, looking at my weaknesses, surely I'll accept it. If somebody says, Brother Satish, this is the wrong thing with you. With all my heart. I accept it and I thank him. If somebody criticizes out of jealousy, I learned a lesson 
a wise man will lay a strong foundation by the stones thrown by the critic. Right. They try to <laughs> throw a stone at you. Take it for a foundation. I take it, lay underneath my feet and I try to grow. And this is what I was doing all the time. Right. So yes, the tree that bears more fruit receives many stones. That's right. So I've gone through that, still go through that, right. but I don't care. In the last many years of ministry, did you ever feel like quitting? Did Situations you? Situations that like came quitting? on. Quitting? <laughs> Never. Never. Wow. Never. Sometimes people look at me, if there is any rich pastor in this nation, <laughs> it is Satish Kumar. Right. But it is not true. Right. But 10 years back, struggle for food, struggle financially, struggle every corner. As a common pastor goes through many difficult, difficult phases in life, I've gone through. In, there are days in my life where, did I have food on Monday? No. About Tuesday? Yes, evening. About Wednesday? No food. About Thursday, no food. But Friday, yes, I had lunch. Those days I have gone through. Financially, I was crushed. Crushed. And I traveled in a lot of countries. And I was very poor in raising, raising fund. Believe me, Brother Jose, I was in America. I was in America for one month. Preached in big, big churches. There was no day without appointment. After one month, I could not raise $400. In America, in America, I fell on my knees and I said, Lord, I came to land of plenty and yet I am empty. Why is this? Then I understood. I think I'm not a fundraiser. I'm not a good fundraiser. There is something that God wants to teach me. I came to the land of plenty and yet I'm empty. There is something that God wants to teach me. Packed everything. I said, Lord, I'm giving you a word. If you feed me, I will serve you with stomach full of food. If you don't feed me, I tell you, I will still serve you. But I will never quit. This is the word that I gave, promise that I gave to God. And that's where I stood. Had enough in my life. Broken financially, broken physically, broken emotionally, broken in every direction. I'm a broken piece. <laughs> and I understand that God builds the kingdom with the broken lives, broken things. If that is true, here I am a broken person. <laughs> and that's where I am. Mega churches are called big box churches. They swallow up the smaller churches. What is your reaction to this? <laughs> yes. It is true. People tell me, criticize me, saying that he is stealing my sheep. But I tell, your sheep is stealing my meat. <laughs> <laughs> or your sheep is stealing my grass. You see? Right. If you are a mother, able to feed your son, he will not come to neighbor's house and grab that sweet. If you are not taking care of your son properly and fill his stomach with sufficient food, he'll come to me. If you are doing justice, why will he come to me? Even if I offer sweet, he will not eat. Right. He's no, no, no. Full. I'm full. My mother takes care of me very well. I didn't have to eat your, from your uh, table. Right. But because you are not feeding, that's the reason your sheep is coming to my uh, field and eating the grass. There is always a saying, crowd attracts crowd. Is that true in your case also? It is only possible f to a certain extent to... But they may not be sustained. Yes. They will not stay for long. Because right. if crowd attracts, what will you get out of crowd? Right. You may come and see and go. Right word attracts when word attracts you will remain there right. we have to understand one thing in this area John John the Baptist he had disciples 
he had the disciples but when Jesus came when his disciples saw Jesus they left John they followed Jesus John was not stop them he understood a better person has come a better teacher has come but usually what I tell them is right in our temple if you think that Kalwar temple is providing good food to you eat mm. but if you find a better church than this right. better food than this right please go to those churches I tell in our church right there is nothing like a, a permanent member to us if right. you find a better church than this please go tomorrow when God asked me I should be able to tell them Lord I never held them with me right. I told them to go to better churches right. so that I am not accountable holding them but not feeding them right so right. I tell them if you find a better church than my uh, this church or uh, better food than what I'm giving please find the church go be a member about cell groups and house churches how effective is in your church um, whether cell group or house churches when they come together ultimately there should be a proper word right. preached by a proper person right there are many cell groups they gather together but there is no proper meditation of the word of God right or uh, there is no proper word preached in the cell group so just like come together have snacks tea have fellowship and end uh, there is nothing like being edified with the word of God but fortunately what's happening with our uh, temple I am on many channels right many Christian and secular channels that's right yeah. morning 5 o'clock to 5 30 365 days I am on one channel right so all our church members they get up morning five o'clock they listen to me very interesting so five to five thirty they are with me right they listen to the word of God a pure word they pray with me and as a family after that word they gather together start their day with God right even in nine o'clock if they are going to sleep by 9 30 9 to 9 30 there's one more TV program 365 days right so they can follow that listen to the word keep Bibles open listen to the word and pray together 9 30 to 10 as a family they pray together right there are people who come from different different companies right they come home by 10 o'clock so for such people I've got a program at 10 30 okay. 10 30 to 11 right so they finish their taking bath finish their food 10 30 along with wife and children they sit in front of television listen to my message then pray along with me pray as a family they sleep when the problem comes in your house what happens you run to the pastor but I cultivated a habit you can pray at your house I've introduced you Jesus Christ now Jesus is your father he said call unto me in the day of trouble I'll answer so even at your house you can call God you didn't have to run to convert temple and you didn't have to run and meet me when you have such a problem you can directly call unto God so in convert temple we try to build that relation with, between God and uh, individuals right thereby they understand we can directly pray to God whenever we are in uh, trouble anyway they are praying every day but in time of need they can directly talk to God right what do you say to the worn out missionaries and burnt out pastors because they give give <laughs> give all the time and they are burnt out when you say burnt out it's because of no oil sometimes what happens pastors like us we try to show light to the world a lamp can show light to the world provided if it has a connection with oil when the burning starts mm. when will when will it burn when it has no connection with the oil 
So oil is basically presence of God or the spirit of God. Right? Pastors who lost touch with God, touch with his presence are the mostly these burnt out pastors. If you don't have touch with God, if you don't have touch with the Holy Spirit, that's where the burning starts. Okay, so do you uh, have the idea of pastors getting Sabbaths? What do you mean by Sabbath? They take day off, month off, like that people do that, right? Uh, what do you say about that? We need to understand one thing, pastor is also human. That's right. We see in the Bible, there is a man called John the Baptist. It doesn't say an angel. It doesn't say a person from heaven. It says man called John the Baptist. Even pastors also are humans. We too need rest. Even Jesus himself tells his disciples, go and rest. Right. So nothing wrong taking weekly one day off so that you know they can revive physically, mentally, and get rid of this stress and strain. Right. I think every pastor must be given this opportunity to have at least one day in a week right. to rest physically. Right. Yes. There is a lot of pastors. No, we can't say quite a, quite a few pastors are now. We are hearing that you know falling into immoral sins and things like that. How do the other pastors uh, bring them back, and how do they support? Falling into adultery is basically not cautious in certain areas. I think we need to set boundaries from the beginning. When Daniel was taken to Babylon, we see that he set a standard. He made a decision in the initial stage that I will not defile my body. Right. I think this is what Look at Job, he says, I have made a covenant with my eyes. I will not look at women. Right. Why Job was a righteous man, why Daniel was a most loved by God is because of their decisions in earlier stage that they set boundaries. Right. I will not cross this boundary. I think every pastor need to keep his own boundaries, right. especially in these areas. Matter of fact, I being the pastor for this big large church, for 10 years, I've never ever spoke to any women on phone. <laughs> In 10 years. Sounds very... <laughs> In 10 years. Though my church was 25 people, 50 people, 100 people, I've got my own principles. I've got my own principles that I would not talk to women, especially on the phone. In person, no. They want to come and talk to me, being I mean, prayed for, counseling, come in the visiting hours, sit along with all, come in line, share your problem, possible I'll counsel you, pray and go. I've got almost 300 sisters work with me in Calvert Temple. In 300 sisters, I never spoke to any sister directly. Every now and then, I call all this, those who are working with me to one hall. I share. I share my heart with them. I instruct them, but in public. Never talk to individuals personally. Is there any mentor or someone who you keep as a model? Thankfully, no one. No one. Why I said thankfully? Because if you take a human as your mentor or, or somebody, you would only reach that standard. But I always looked unto Jesus. So humanly speaking, you don't have a no. human mentor or human model to follow? Yes, no. No, right. Have your church experienced persecutions in the last 10 years? Not really. Not really. I've seen the grace of men is, right. has been granted to our church because people around us always friendly right, and uh, very good to us. Hmm. Your church sends missionaries outside? Yes, we send a lot of missionaries outside and we support a lot of missionaries. Oh, right. Because I myself wanted to be a missionary yes. but I could not become. Right. So I love missionaries, we support missionaries, we send missionaries. What's your future plans? 
reach yes. the lost as much as possible as many as possible right. from your opinion because you talked about money what is m the money playing is is the great role or uh, people always talk if money is there I would have done that <laughs> I would have built it I would have you know this is the way pastors speak <laughs> as if money speaks let me tell you I've gone through this I mean, phrase of life, you know. I thought England will support me. <laughs> I thought America will support me. For a certain period, I was after money, not for my sake, for the ministry ministry's sake. Right. But as I was after money, it was always flying away from me. Then I came back to senses. I said, no, I will not be after money. I'll be after God. Right. I'll be after God's will. I made up my mind. When I was struggling for money, asking for money, God taught me a great lesson. Do wherever you are. Whatever you have. With whatever you have. How much you can. Do it. Above this, I will not ask you anything. So wherever you are, what whatever you have, whatever you can do it, do it. If I gave you 10 rupees, do the ministry with the 10 rupees only. Why do you put 10 rupees one side and ask God, give me 1 lakh, then do it. Then do with the 10 rupees. And show me what will you do with the 10 rupees. Mm -hmm. This is what I learned in lesson. So when God gives me 10 rupees, I will try to do 100 rupees work. And I tell Lord, faithful in this little thing. That is how this ministry was built right. not on money not on money because can you believe a church which was built in 52 days now approximately we have about 14 to 15 acres of land in the center of Hyderabad right. this land was pur purchased the temple was built not with any foreign funds with Indian money uh, I understand this brother Indians can serve God with Indian money our God is able to support Indians, uh, Indian pastors with Indian money, if only we trust God. Right. Can we just go to some lighter moments? What makes you really laugh? <laughs> the one who is inside me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what makes you really angry? A delayed work. What do you consider the greatest achievement? Not it. Not it. Not it. If you're given a full freedom to move around the whole world, will you stay in India or you still build something else somewhere else? Full freedom, God gives you. I think I stay within four walls of my temple. Is there anything that you like to change in your life? Maybe I need to work more for God. <laughs> you are working tirelessly. Do, I don't think so. I don't think that I am doing best. There is something always drives me that there is something I can do more for God. I think I need to do more for God. Doctor, to end this uh, conversation, what do you like to say to the church planters who died to have a mega church? <laughs> what do you like to say to them? No. I don't think that God has called everybody to have mega churches. We need to remove that idea from our mind. It is not important how big your church is, but it is important how faithful you are to the calling of God. As a pastor of the largest church in mm -hmm. India, what do you like to say to a believer who is watching, who will be watching? I would say that we all have to show Christ through our lives because he said you are the light of the world if Christ is in us and we need to talk like Christ walk like Christ love like Christ forgive like Christ and have that patience like Christ if every Christian can duplicate Christ I think we will win this world. 
for Christ. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Very Thank much you, for being Brother Joseph, for program. this wonderful program. Have a wonderful, wonderful celebration of your 10th year. Thank you, you too. Thank, Thank you so much for inviting me here. That was Dr. Satish Kumar, pastor of the largest church in India. Hope you enjoyed the conversation that we had. And we are going to bring similar personalities in the coming days. Keep watching our episode by the Bullet Joes.